Hi, I'm Mark Hayes, International Creative Director at Sassoon, and today I'm going to show you a look that is from our new collection, which, which we've entitled The Dandies. And um, the overarching concept of The Dandies is about men's haircuts for girls. Um, and it kind of takes the inspiration from our ABC Barbering series. There's three looks in the collection. One is entitled Jockey Club, the second is entitled Roustabouts, and the third, which I'm going to demonstrate for you today, is called Suede Head. The suede heads were a very particular street style look in London in a, a, around about 1972. And um, they provided a segue between the skinheads of the late 60s and the smoothies or the glam rockers of the mid 70s. Suede heads were very particular about their style and in particular about their hair. They kind of wore their hair as a grown out version of the skinhead crop. It was based on a, a look that became known as the Chelsea cut, which is a very short interior with longer extended lengths through the side. And Sassoon interpreted that around that time with haircuts like the Moosh and the Havington, which became, in a sense, it became the third wave of the geometric look of Sassoon. So that's the, the look that I'm going to do for today. So, um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so we've got Daisy's hair shampooed, and um, what I've done first of all, I've put in a, a very low side parting into the hair. So you can see here, that's where the haircut's going to kind of stem from. And the, the key is, as I said earlier, it's short on the interior and has the length around the edges. And in my mind, I've got a kind of like Mia Farrow type of length through the top, like a short layered length through the top that's going to work a, around the head into the, um, giving us a really nice, um, giving us a really nice profile shape. To isolate the technique through the top, we're gonna work with these little triangular darts of hair through the side here. That'll be cut down short. There'll be a panel of length through that side, and then the hair will come down short again through the top, and then into the length through the second side. Um, so it's just a case now of just working out the dynamics of the shape and getting into the technique. So just following along the head shape, just developing a fraction more length as it comes over to the crown to allow me to work that length into the back. And just over directing the hair up slightly. So again, it will have a visual blend 
into the longer hair through the sides. And um, not really concerning myself too much at the moment with the, um, with the outline through the front. I know that I can kind of toughen that up afterwards, but it's just about getting the narrowness through the temple and then the exaggerated length around the outline. Okay, so having completed the little triangular section through the side, I'm now gonna move on to the back using the length from that triangle of the guide that will bend over into a very head-hugging shape through here. I've divided the hair off just in the corner because it's important for the look that the outline works through square. I don't want it to kind of jump up. So I've divided the hair off there. And this now is just gonna be layered down to um, follow the shape of the head. So keeping things reasonably simple in terms of the technique and allowing the sectioning and the, and I suppose in a sense, allowing the contrast in lengths to give you the, uh, the dynamic of the shape. Working with the existing length through the outline, kind of want to have the scope to refine the edge a little bit later. Diagonal sections and just over directing the hair very slightly back onto the previous section so you're going to keep the angle reasonably square as it comes across the back of the head into the sides. Flattening across the occipital bone. And you can see it's a little bit longer on the outline and then comes in shorter on the inside. So you can see now how the shape's building up, nice and flat on the interior, and then just flaring out nicely on the outline. I'm now gonna progress ac across the back, taking everything just down, following the shape of the head, and just building out a tiny bit of length through the edge to blend, to visually blend with the side. So I've just worked across the back, as you can see here now, working with the existing outline through here. And um, just taking the last section and just kind of blending that through. As you can see, my fingers are at an angle that allows me to leave a fraction more length through the top here, flattening down into the side. And just over directing the hair back, so we have a visual blend between the short lengths through the back here and then the length that is going to be left in the sides. And then af afterwards what I'll do is just to come back through here and just to tighten the edge up so that it flows into the length behind the ear and then visually just layer through the longer length slightly. So now it's just a case of repeating exactly that same procedure through the second side before we then come into the top lengths. Once again, just starting the technique on the diagonal, lifting the hair out and just making sure that my fingers remain relatively flat, they're not angling in towards the nape. Part of the key to the look, the kind of suede head look, is that the interior of the shape should be very definitely shorter than the exterior. That's the kind of overall balance. And I think, you know, when you look at the Sassoon geometric method, I always think that there's kind of almost three waves of geometry. If you, obviously, the five point, the Nancy Kwan, the asymmetric geometric shapes that Vidal pioneered in the early 60s were absolutely right for that particular period of time. And I think then in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, they were superseded by the graduated shape, the firefly, the wedge, 
those types of looks. And I think the Havington and the Moosh were almost like the third wave of geometrics. They were softer internally, but they were absolutely rooted in, in the Sassoon geometric method of, of working with hair. So even though the finished look was different, the basic principle of cutting hair in terms of lines, graduations and layers, what we now refer to as the ABC. So just working this through, as you can see, angling my fingers away from the edge and then coming back through and flattening across the occipital bone and up into the crown. Okay, so just now coming to the last section on the second side. Um, one, of, one of the things I was just thinking as I was working through is that um, as the sections reach um, the corner, as I said, you start off diagonally and work around. And I suppose what you end up doing is actually straightening them up again and even tipping them around the other way. So your, your, your angle allows you just to drop the length out around the sides and um, just provide the right amount of shortness th up through the temple. Still over directing the hair slightly back, keeping my fingers reasonably flat to the head. And just allowing, as I said earlier, just allowing a little certain amount of length to de develop through the top of the head. So what that does, it actually accentuates the, um, the flatness through the back, which is, key, as I said, is key to the technique. And I kind of like the way that the edge in the back here, you know, obviously it's a little bit raw at the moment, but the idea is that there's a little bit of length there that you can use in the shape, and then you have a little texture that comes up into the top. So what I'm gonna do now is to start cutting through the top area from this side. As I said earlier, I want to leave a little fin of length on the top here, and then this will just fold over and follow the shape of the head and then flare out into the outline through the side. So I'm just going to take a section along the head, use the length on the crown as my um, my guide. And literally just follow, follow the shape of the head through the top. Again, lifting the hair up, I don't want to create a hard line between the short hair here and the long hair directly underneath. And I'm thinking of that really seminal haircut by Vidal or Mia Farrow that just had the most beautiful um, head-hugging shape. So I'm really trying to work, work the length down so that it just fits onto the head. And then when I cross-check, I'll just kind of flare it out a little bit so it just follows the head a little bit more. So lifting up and then pushing the hair away from me to build out a certain amount of length as we work across the top. So just going back to, I'll, I'll go through the top now so you can see what we've actually achieved here. So we have this kind of shorter layered panel through the crown. And then I've just divided this long strip of hair. It's like anything that we do with hair. It's kind of, um, you very quickly sort of sketch in the overall idea. So I've got obviously the shortness running through the interior and then just the length through either side. And then once I've dried the hair, it will then be a case of going back through and gently refining and blending all of the, um, the disparate lengths together. 
but I like the way the hair just sits. I've left a certain amount of length around the outline as well. So again, we can work that shape in a little bit tougher. So we'll dry the hair through and then we'll come back and, and refine the whole shape.